Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. If you're looking for the best value in a 10-inch or 9-inch tablet, it's hard to beat the Kindle Fire HD 8.9, which is only 299 bucks, cheaper than the base Nexus 10. This video, we're going to unbox the 8.9 now that they're finally shipping and give you some first impressions. Let's get to it. And so like the Nexus 10, you're working with a really high resolution screen here on the Kindle Fire HD 8.9. We're gonna talk about the differences in a minute. Of course, the reason that the price is so low on the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 is because it's subsidized by all the content you're going to buy as an Amazon customer. So let's take this out. Quite light, nothing really in the box. Let's boot it on for the first time. Really curious to see how this feels in the hand. This is so much lighter uh, than you're used to for a heavier tablet like an iPad or something else that's in the 10 inch range. Got a very similar design to the Kindle Fire HD 7 and we're gonna compare it. We've got the dual speakers which are impressively loud at least on the 7 inch. And it looks, it looks pretty much like a blown up Kindle Fire HD 7 as it should. Okay, so let's find the power button here. Hopefully it's not, yeah, that's terrible. It's hidden along the bezel just like on the 7 inch. That's very frustrating. So we're going to boot it up. Now what we have here is a 1920 by 1200 screen. That's really high resolution, but the Nexus 10 takes it way beyond that at 2560 by 1600. At the end of the day, on both of these devices, you're not going to be able to see pixels very well because they're so small. Um, but here on the Kindle Fire HD, you've got to remember that the price is lower, so the compromise that you're making here is, of course, uh, the screen isn't as high resolution, and you don't get full Android. You get Amazon's Kindle experience, which really isn't a bad thing if you have a lot of Kindle content. So we're going to unlock it here. Let's get a close look at the text. Really crisp and clear here, much better than the 7-inch Kindle Fire HD, which has a resolution of 1280 down by 800 across, just like the Nexus 7. So we're going to set this up and come back with some first impressions. We're also going to remove that glare so you can see the screen better. We'll be back. And we're back, and these screens are so incredibly shiny, which is why they're reflecting everything. Uh, but this is the 7-inch Kindle Fire HD, this is the 8.9-inch, and not surprisingly, they are pretty much the same, just one is a lot bigger than the other. The thing that's striking about the 8.9-inch is that it's so lightweight uh, with such a high-resolution screen. We're used to seeing devices like the iPad 3 and 4 with their high-res displays being really thick and heavy. That is not the case with the Kindle Fire. Uh, HD 8.9, and it's also not the case with the Nexus 10. And of course with the Nexus 10, as we just mentioned, you get full Android, whereas with the Kindle Fire HD, you are buying into Amazon's ecosystem, which is fine because there's a lot of great content. So real quick, we're gonna turn on both of these, and because of the poor placement of the power button, you've gotta sometimes uh, kind of finagle. And this is the one with special offers, so uh, every time you turn on your, your device, you're gonna get an advertisement, which is not that big of a deal, actually, and it's a fair trade-off. You just ignore it, or sometimes they're useful offers. So looking for the power button here, we've got Mickey Mouse, Epic Mini. The display on this thing is amazing, the 8.9. We're gonna get real close in a minute. But you know, it's the same kind of experience. We get a menu over here like we have over here. This is the Kindle Fire operating system. It's not full Android, although you probably soon will be able to root and load a custom ROM onto the Kindle Fire. Uh, HD 8.9, which will be quite awesome, actually. Kind of like a $299 Nexus device, if you will, uh, as long as that comes to fruition. We've got a lower resolution screen here on the 7-inch, so if we look close up on the text, you can see pixels. Uh, but over here on the 8.9, this is just a fantastic display. So let's bounce around a little bit. Uh, we'll look at various things. We've got a book here. Let's see how text looks on the screen. Uh, you can look at really small text on this uh, 1920 by 1600 display. It just looks really, really good. And of course, it's, it's the weird Kindle operating system, so you have to get used to that. And of course, we've got web over here. And the web browser isn't that capable, to be honest. They've got the, uh, the Silk browser engine, which does server-side rendering, but it's not much faster uh, than your average browser or it's even slower in some cases. If I, if I flick down the page, it becomes white for several seconds. It's just, it's not made for web browsing. Uh, but that said, uh, kind of would be nice if it was made for web browsing because the text looks so sharp and clear. I mean, uh, this just has a wonderful display, great contrast, great color saturation, and the browser just 
would be nice to have better performance in it. Uh, so we go back. One of the awesome things about the Kindle Fire HDs, the new one, are the speakers. And we can't show you that on camera because it really wouldn't come through. But the audio that this thing pumps out is loud, like really loud. And it has an interesting surround effect that does, in fact, feel like you're listening to surround sound. It's very difficult to explain. Go to a Best Buy and check it out for yourself. If you're an Amazon Prime customer, there's a bevy of content that you can watch uh, for free in the uh, Kindle, Kindle library, which is quite nice. So right out of the box, you get a 30-day trial of Prime, or you can buy it for a low yearly fee, and you get access to a ton of free content. And of course, Amazon's ecosystem doesn't stop there. You've also got their music catalog, which is very extensive and very uh, competitive what you, with what you get in Google Play and with iTunes. And of course, you got to go through an authorized device. And up here, we've got newspapers and magazines, and it's really the full enchilada. So we've got Maxim here, and on such a high-resolution display, kids, look away. Just kidding. This is safe for work. On such a high-resolution display, the page just looks awesome. And for example, I, you can't really tell on camera, but I don't need to zoom in on any of these names. I can see it from the entire zoomed out view. Whereas if I brought up the same page on the seven inch Kindle Fire HD, you would have to zoom in because the resolution is lower. So a really cool magazine viewing experience. Unfortunately, magazines are not made in 16 by nine aspect ratio. They're made in four by three. So you get all this wasted space along the bottom. And with a software update, you can actually, you actually get this page turn animation, which is fun. Again, this is safe for work, so don't worry. Um, so, so much better now with the higher resolution display for looking at uh, various magazines. And Amazon has a huge selection of magazines now. Really, any content that you want, Amazon has it. And for 299 bucks, this is just an awesome, awesome device uh, to buy, especially if the option exists to root it and put full Android on it. And we're going to check back and see if that's even possible now, because it would make for one heck of an Android tablet. So anyway, have you ordered the Kindle Fire HD 8.9? Is it on your holiday shopping list? What do you think about it? Or are you thinking about getting a Nexus 10? Let us know in the comments. Maybe you're happy with your Nexus 7. You love the seven inch form factor and it just works for you or you're an iPad fan. Let us know what you think and if you're considering the 8.9 Kindle Fire HD. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.